AccuCare Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine in Brick, New Jersey offers a state-of-the-art facility with all the best and current treatments. With athletic trainers, massage therapists, and doctors of physical therapy, AccuCare has everything you need to stay healthy and perform at the highest level. Cupping, stretching, laser therapy, compression boots, and a full-body cryo chamber are just some of what you can expect at AccuCare. Check out their website and social media links in my bio. No prescription is needed to see them. So, so call them today and start feeling and performing at your best. Again, thank you to AccuCare for sponsoring the Shore Football Report. Just got two things to say right now. First, I want to thank AccuCare. They are awesome. Our great sponsor. Get there. If you haven't been there yet, make an appointment. Get to AccuCare, especially towards the end of the season when your body needs to get that extra push and be healthy on the football field. Rehabilitation, recovery, they are the best. Make an appointment. Call. Call them and tell them you're coming. All right? The Shore Football Report is definitely endorsing going to AccuCare. They're the best out there uh, right now. And they have athletes going there around the clock, all sports, and, and that's that. And also, when you're transitioning to another sport, your body is going to be needing this AccuCare um, treatment because you're using different body parts. So just make sure that you utilize AccuCare located in Brick. They are the best I love being associated with them. They are part of the team, the Shore Football Report team. All right. The other thing I want to say is this. Subscribe to the Shore Football Report YouTube channel. Every one of you, when you watch it, click subscribe. It's free. It's free. Turn the notifications off if you don't want to hear it. But subscribe. By you subscribing, says thank you. I need a thousand. I want a thousand subscribers. Please, 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 please subscribe. <laughs> Scott Stump says I don't say it enough on our show. That's why we don't got a thousand subscribers. But subscribe. All joking aside, it's a cool thing to do. All right, join the join the Shore Football Report team. We got so many things that are going to be going on our YouTube channel, not just our talk shows. We're going to have extensive, extensive all-star team uh, coverage that we're going to do. Also, yes, you've been asking, the Stumpy Awards, they're coming back. The Stumpy Awards are coming back from eight years ago, and I know you guys are going to love it. So we're going to have all my all-star teams, uh, all county, all shore, um, all division, my rankings of players, because I changed things up and seeing how guys are playing, adding the freshmen, the, the 2026s are going to be included in that rankings too. It's a lot of stuff. All going to be on our YouTube, the Shore Football Report YouTube. Subscribe. You won't want to miss it. In the off season, I'll be doing things around the clock for recruiting, talking with college coaches and coaches from all over the country will be on my talk shows throughout the off season. There's no off in my season. All right. Subscribe to the Shore Football Report. And also, more importantly, make an appointment to AccuKid. This is Rob Davis from the Shore Football Report. And we're going to talk the newly formed Regional Invitational Tournament. We got seven games from that short conference teams will be playing in, and we're going to talk about that uh, in a second. And then we have two regular scheduled games still going on. We have 
Red Bank Catholic and St. John Vianney closing out the season and getting ready for the non-public parochial playoffs, which is going to be next week, and we'll know the seedings after this week. And then we have seven other Constellation games where teams kind of didn't make the regional invitation tournament, didn't make the state playoffs, so they just kind of picked teams, and they're playing out the season right there. All right? So you ready? Let's go. Let's talk some football. All right, let's talk regional invitation tournament. Now, what does this compromise? It compromises of teams that did not make the state playoffs, just fell short. They were to seed 17 to 24. They were put into a pile, and they then they did Northern in lines. <laughs> Listen, it's crazy. Northern lines, to see, they wanted to put people in a brackets that were kind of geographically closer to each other. Yes. So then they re, then they, uh, did the PowerPoints that way. So, and here's what we got. All right. So they're actually playing a mini tournament. You win, you keep advancing. You lose, you're out. So you can play up to three games in this, this uh, regional invitation tournament. Pretty, pretty neat. Gives the guys some motivation to play at the end of the season and guys to kind of rebuild their, their, their season, maybe they didn't have a, a good one or they got a young team and they kind of get ready for next season. So I kind of like it where it gets the guys um, still competitive and meaningful type of games. All right. So let's talk of our games. South Jersey group five short conference has Howell. So it'll be two and six Perth Amboy at four and four Howell. Now Howell's had an up and down season. As you can see, they were four and four. Um, just barely missed the playoffs. They have a lot of talent. They have J Jack uh, Gartenstein, um, a quarterback. He plays also receiver. Um, they they got a very, very exciting offense. They haven't scored a lot when they get into the red zone, but from the 20 to 20, they can move the ball on anybody. Their defense comes up big uh, a lot during the season. I love Seven Miller. I really, really do. Ray D. Francisco had a very good season to look for Kevin Maloney and Gordonstein to really have a show against Perth Amboy in the first round. South Jersey Group 4, we have 1-8 and eight Princeton at 4-3 and three Red Bank. Red Bank 2 just barely missed the state playoffs. Had a great game last week, but lost 26-22. to 22. Last second, heartbreaking loss. You know, they, they had the championship on a line, division championship on a line, and a berth to the state playoffs. They were winning by nine points in the second half. Ocean came, came back on two big key conversion drives the last the last uh, couple minutes and came out with a heartbreaking uh, loss for Red Bank. Red Bank's very explosive offense. Their defense isn't up to par with their offense, but they can score in just about anyway. Lamar Hicks, quarterback Pierce Olsen. I love Kayami uh, Martin. That you know, Jasir Jones. They got athletes. Griffin Egan up front. I look for Red Bank to take it to Princeton in the first round of the South Jersey Group Four Regional Inv Invitation Tournament. I think Red Bank has a chance to kind of win this bracket too. Also, in, in South Jersey Group Four is four and four Brick Township at three and six Northern Burlington. I saw Brick Township last week playing Brick Memorial in a very, very uh, exciting rivalry football game. They looked. They were on point. They looked crisp. They were flying to the football, making key plays offensively. They look like a playoff team. They really, really do. And Brick Township playing good football going into this regional invitation tournament. I look for them to beat Northern Burlington. I really do. If they can play at that level. Now, Coach Zdanowicz has got to make sure that you just don't play at a high against a rival and then drop right back down playing a team out on the other side of New Jersey. So it's very, very, um, I'm very curious to see if Brick Township can keep that focus like they did last week. And if they do, look for them to beat Northern Burlington. Then you have three and five Tom Driver East at four and four Brick Memorial in the same bracket. And the winner of this game plays Brick Township winner uh, in Northern Burlington. Connor Dietz is tough. One of the best guys all around. 
in, in the short conference at quarterback playing Tom Reese that's kind of had a you know a sub far football season playing in a lower division too weren't able to crack as many wins as I thought maybe they might but um you never know they they play with good defense their offense has been a little bit behind the eight ball but Brick Memorial the same way offensively they're the top offense defensively they're at the bottom so I look for Brick Memorial, though, with their offense is just a little too much for Tom Drew East, and Connor Dietz is going to be able to, to have a little bit of a offensive out, out, outburst. So look for Brick Memorial uh, to win. I like to think that maybe Brick Memorial might play Brick Township in a rematch of last week's game in the second round of the South Jersey Group 4 Regional Invitation Tournament. South Jersey Group 3. We have four and four Allentown at one and six Wall. I think Wall's a dangerous team uh, to, for, for anybody in this bracket right here. You have Allentown that that playing good football. I know their quarterback and running back are now out for the year, so they kind of limp into the playoffs right now. Playing a Wall team that's <clears throat> you know a proven team playing tough teams and just won last week fourteen seven against Manalapit. Look for Wall to take it to Allentown, and I think that they can go on a run, too, in their side of the bracket there. On the other side of the bracket for Group 3, very interesting uh, matchup that could happen if both teams win. You have Barnegat and Pinelands both playing home against Pemberton. So Pemberton 3-5 and five at 3-5 and five Barnegat. I, I, I see Barnegat taking it to Pemberton without a doubt. I think JoJo Bivens is a little too much for Pemberton, and look for him to break 1,000 yards. He needs 184 yards to break 1,000 in his in his fantastic career. And I don't think it's going to end today, uh, end uh, on this day. I think they're going to roll and have a key matchup next week, which I'm going to talk about right now. The next round, two and six, uh, next game, two and six Triton at five and three Pinelands. John Tierney's having a great season. At Pinelands, one of the best years they've ever, ever had. Just missed the playoffs. And look for Pinelands, I think, to come out victorious at, at against Triton and do a rematch against Barnegat, where they lost 7-6 to six la- uh, uh, beginning of a football season. And you know Pinelands has got that game circled on their, ca- on their schedule right now, and they want a rematch with Barnegat. And that will be a very, very big on the field and in the atmosphere at Barnicket. It really will. So look for Barnicket and Pinelands to advance and play in the next round. We have two regular season games left, and it's two of the non-public football programs waiting for the state playoffs to happen next week. We have number two ranked Red Bank Catholic, 7-1 they come in, playing stat playing Curtis from Staten Island, New York. They're four and three. You know, look, I, I think Red Bank Catholic is primed for another title run in the state playoffs, and this game is going to prep them and get them ready. Coach Lang's done a remarkable job the last two years. He really has. The core of the players were back from last year's non-public B state championship team. I love the way Frankie Williams, the quarterback, the sophomore Quarterback, sophomore sensation, should I say that, has done a great job this season and what weapons he has. Sabino Portella, Torin Horman, Najee Rahman, Emmanuel Ross, Robert Stolfka, receiver. They have three tight ends that I really, really like. A huge line, Lorenzo Portella, Tyler Burnham. They are very, very loaded at off on offense. And in defense, you know, you got Devin Bruton, leading the linebackers. You have Michael Paul Mary uh, at linebacker. I love their DNs. Aiden Donahue is one of the best out there at DN. They really do have a lot, a lot of talent uh, there. And a lot of the guys play the other side of the football. I just look for Red Bank Catholic to, to just kind of run through Cur- Curtis on um, on uh, on Friday and just get ready for the non-public be which I think they'll be the number one seed this year, and we never know, but I think they'll be the number one seed coming next week. Then we could talk more about their uh, state title uh, defense. And then the next game, you have St. Thomas Iguanas, 8-1 at number 10, 5-3, St. John Vianney 
Coach Papson has done a great job this year. Has hit up, you know, when you talk about adversity, you know, they lost their first game and they lost pretty bad to Red Bank Catholic. You didn't know what to take of them, you know, and then they came on a five game winning streak. And Aaron Van Trees is, um, you know, terrible, terrible injury that happened. You know, that, that, that's adversity. You know, the game of life is bigger than the game of football. We always preach that, and it was very obvious uh, th- this year with that, too. And our prayers are always with, with the Van Trees family. Um, you know, we if there's anything we always could do for them, we will do it for them. And, and just a credit to them on the football field, how they stayed focused through all this di- difficult adversity that these teenagers had to, um, to go through. Doing a great job. I love Christian Buchanan, at linebacker. He's quietly having a very solid football season. Um, you got Foley, a quarterback who also plays safety. They got some some ballers. Kyle Vares, remember that name. You know, he's been having a great season right there. And St. John Vianney's just playing good team football. And that that's a credit to the coaching staff there. They've been playing good team football and doing it in the trenches and also doing it with, with a whole bunch of different names out there. I look for St. John, uh, I look for St. John Vianney to play tough. St. Thomas Aquinas is a very solid football team and explosive. This is a difficult task, but this will without a doubt get them ready for the really tough, difficult, non-public, non-public a state playoffs. If they could beat St. Thomas Aquinas, this might elevate them maybe higher than Donovan Catholic. So we will see. Okay, now we have seven seven games of Constellation games. They're not in the state playoffs. They're not in the regional invitation tournament. So they were able to kind of gentlemen's agreement and pick games to play to finish out the season. So let's talk about these games. And to me, Every game is important. It really is. Anytime they step on the field, a lot of players and teams have different goals now at this time of the year, and it's very interesting to see which teams prevail in these games. You have 0-8 Central at 1-7 Tom Driver South. Both programs were not, um, not, not foreseeing those records at all, but I do know the coaching staffs very well. They're very prideful. They've been very successful in the years past, everywhere they've been at. And I'm going to that football game because I know that there's going to be some good football being played Thursday night at Tom Driver South. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of those athletes, you know, Devin Sisler playing. I heard Chase Gumbrit might be playing, um, which he did play last week. I'm excited to see him because I've seen him in game game one before he got hurt. Uh, what a tremendous football player he is, and I'd just love to see him finish his high school career on the football field, walking off the, the field, um, you know, coming back from a pretty tough injury with that. Central's a, a, got a team that had a lot of injuries this year. Uh, no excuses they're making at all. They've had a lot of injuries, but I'm very, very interested to see the fight uh, in, in them on Thursday night. And then Tom Driver South, you're talking about Coach um, – Matt Martin, this is his first season. He knows he's inherited a team that has a lot of sophomores that they're playing. They got hit too with the injury injury bug too, but they're battling. And like I said, I know their coaching staff just like Central, and they're going to have these guys prepared to put on what a, a very good show at Tom Driver South. Tom Driver South always has a great atmosphere at all their games with their incredible band. Um, the, the fans are always excited and they very support and they support their football programs all the time with that. So I'm excited to see these guys playing in a very competitive football game central at Tom River South. You have one and six Neptune at three and five Ewing Neptune just got their first win last week against Tom River South 30 to 20. Devon Kraft is one of the top running backs in the short conference. DeAndre Banks is a great two way lineman. Um, look for, Look for Neptune, I believe, to shock Ewing, a 3-5 and five Ewing, just because I think Neptune plays good football against some quality teams, and they've just been on the 
the down uh, down end of a lot of tough football games. I look for them to to really bounce and get their second win for Coach Duffy. One and six Hamilton at three and five Jackson Liberty. Coach Sharples won a lot of won some games that maybe a lot of people weren't expecting. Kind of surprised it in a couple of games. They they played tough three and five this year. Um, I, I look for them to finish strong. I really do. I, I, I think that they can take Hamilton and, um, you know, and kind of look at the future and say, <clears throat> you know, we finished strong and uh, we got some some good play out of some quality guys. They played with a sophomore quarterback, Dennis Caswell. They're very young. I love Donovan. Um, uh, hmm, I forgot his name. Donovan. Hmm, I forgot his name, but the sophomore uh, O-line D lineman, good football player. They they got a lot of young talent. That sophomore class Jackson Liberty has is something to put their hat on in, in the future. So look for Jackson Liberty to come out strong and 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 look into next year with a lot of high expectations. Three and four Bordentown at two and six Manchester. This is Coach Farrell's first season. You know he finished very strong. 2-0, and oh, you know, beating Lakewood and beating Tom Drury East at East, which I thought was a tremendous win. You know, then they came on a six-game losing streak. So, you know, they kind of hit both ends right now. You know, uh, one thing you're going to know about Coach Farrell and the Manchester Hawks, they're going to play hard. They're going to be passionate at what they do, and I like what they do. I love, I love Josh Love. I, Aiden Lund has done tremendous this year at quarterback. And only a sophomore. I'm looking forward to seeing how Manchester kind of finishes and finishes strong. Bordentown is coached by Skip Edwards, a former short conference football coach. He's got that program being very competitive the last two years. It's going to be a tough game for Manchester. This is like a 50 50 game. And this is what it's all about the consolation games. So we're going to see how Manchester competes at home on Coach Farrell's birthday. Happy birthday, Coach Farrell. Two and six point beach at two and six Holy Cross. Coach Zacone always has his players uh, playing hard. They run through the wall for Coach Zacone. They love their program. They love, they're very devoted to their their their, their program and, and their head coach. I'm rooting for Point Beach to go down South Jersey and steal one from Holy Cross at two and six. Joe Beely is gonna end his career on a high note. He really is. What a tremendous football player he is and one of the most underrated football players in the short conference, too. And don't forget Grosso, too, having a tremendous season after he moved from line to running back uh, right there. And then 3-5 and five Lakewood at 3-5 and five Popton Lakes. Lakewood got put with a another forfeit win to give him that third win. Lakewood's offense has been very explosive. Their defense has not. Playing a Popton Lakes team, which I, doesn't, I don't know too much about, um, and, and that, that might be also good for Lakewood if they don't know each other because Lakewood's got some weapons and L.J. Clark does some unique things offensively that if you don't have a scout report on him, he can exploit you with those offensive schemes right there. I really, really am pushing for Lakewood to surprise Pompton Lakes behind Javon Gonzalez, the outstanding senior quarterback. And the last game in the Constellation games, it's 2-6 and six South River at 1-6 and six Keensburg. Coach Reed uh, is getting down to the end of his first football season as the head coach. It was great that he won against Kip Academy in big fashion, 49-6. Um, got hit with some big injury bugs. And again, him too. Didn't give any excuses at all. The kids fought and fought and fought to the end and played good, inspiring football at the end, especially in their loss of 13-6 to Keyport who's in the state playoffs and has high expectations there. So Keensburg really fought hard at the end of the season, and I believe that they will win against South River uh, this, this week. 